Hi, Tim. It's a pleasure to meet you today. Likewise, it's nice to meet you too. So, Tim, I actually have a sign right here. It says Tribe Way. What is the tribe? Can you tell me more about that? At William and Mary, we refer to ourselves as the tribe.、Uh, that's what our athletic teams go by. That, that's kind of the nickname. But more importantly to us, it gets back to that sense of community. For us, the tribe is our family. We actually have a, a phrase at William and Mary: "One tribe, one family." And that goes back to whether it's that first day of classes and opening convocation when you're invited into the tribe or family, or long after you've graduated from William and Mary, knowing that this is always a family, always a close knit community for you. So that's the importance of the tribe for William and Mary. I hear that William and Mary is considered a public IV. What exactly does that mean? Many of the top universities throughout、uh, this country's history have been associated with private universities. For example, you might think of the Ivy League institutions, all of which are、uh, private universities. About three decades ago,、uh, there was a book that was written that identified eight universities in the United States that were technically public universities, but that in many ways the quality of the academic experience, the reputation of the university, was much more like those top private universities. So what that means for us is when a student comes to William and Mary, they get the reputation and kind of elite academic experience that you often associate. Associate with that、uh, historic private university, but at the same time, they get a little bit more of the feel, the diversity, the connection that you typically see in a public university setting in the United States. How is William and Mary distinguished amongst other top tier universities? We balance together those best elements of a larger research university、uh, with the smaller classroom experiences that you might typically find in a much smaller college. Our student to faculty ratio is right about 12 to 1,、uh, which among public universities、uh, we're number one in the nation. Indeed, our undergraduate population size is right about 6,500 students. It's the perfect size for a university. When a student comes. Comes to William and Mary, they're going to feel like they have a large enough critical mass of students, academic programs.、Uh, it'll feel like a vibrant campus community, but at the same time, the classes are going to be taught by professors, not by teaching assistants. So our professors are really going to get to know you, and you're going to see your professors not just as these people way off in the distance in giant lecture halls、uh, leading you. That's not going to be the case, but instead, you're going to see them as As teachers, as advisors, and as mentors. Let's talk about the government program. William and Mary is located in Virginia and very close to Washington D.C., but also has a very rich history. I'm wondering what makes the program so unique. Well, it's really neat to work at a university that's been around for more than 300 years, and the government department is, is one of the oldest departments, and so it's neat to be at a place with that kind of history. I think it has also imbued our students with a sense of public service. The students, while they're here at William and Mary, are asking important questions with an eye towards how they can serve the country and serve the world. And then when they graduate and go on and, and achieve huge important things, they really want to share that with future generations of William and Mary students. And so we have incredibly close ties with alumni of the government department, with our current students, and our current students have fantastic opportunities for internships and employment after they graduate. And why do you think William and Mary is the best place for students to learn in the government program and about politics? So the William and Mary Department of Government thinks of itself as the best place in the country to get an undergraduate degree in political science, and the reason is our work is entirely focused with undergraduate students. But we develop the rigor and intensity of a graduate program, and so our very best students are involved in our research, are conducting their own research projects, and I think that that's very unique compared to other places across the country. Are you working on any exciting research projects right now? I am.、Uh, I have a, a long-standing project、uh, with a, a former student who was in my research lab, and, and now is actually a professor herself. 
Um, she and I have been working for over five years on a project where we examine uh, what people experience when they talk face to face about politics. And then we've done a number of studies where we have people talk about politics and, and see which factors tend to make people um, the most uncomfortable and, and thinking about ways and how can we alleviate people's discomfort in talking about politics. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard something about the SNAP Lab. What exactly is that? The SNAP Lab is one of my favorite parts of my job. And we call ourselves the Social Networks and Political Psychology Lab. Students work uh, as part of a team project that's helping me with one of my own research projects or they're working to develop their own ideas. All about the politics of social media. How do people communicate on social media? Um, how do uh, elected officials uh, use social media to their advantage? Um, what are some of the, the ways in which social media can be manipulated? Um, all sorts of really important questions that matter for the outcomes of elections and people's belief in the legitimacy of their government. It sounds like it's an incubator for the government program. It is. The culture in our department is that faculty develop these sorts of incubator models where we train students on how to do research so that they're equipped by their senior year to be able to do their own independent projects. Tell me about how your intellectual pursuits have been supported by William & Mary. One of the things I like best about William & Mary is that they put their money where their mouth is. And so I have felt incredibly supported since I've been here, both in terms of financial resources to conduct my research, but also in terms of the culture that's supportive of it. What type of students do you see seeking out the university and applying to William & Mary? One, students who have academic curiosity. They recognize that a big step is learning to learn. And there are students who just uh, want to, to learn about different subjects. And then I think the other part uh, that we're looking for in the application is, is we want students who see this as being part of our tribe, being part of the community. If a student is looking for a university where they just go to class and then go home and call it a day and that's the end of it, William & Mary probably isn't the best fit for them. If, however, they're looking for a place where they can go to class, really think about what they learned in class, and then be involved with the student community outside of the class, then I think William & Mary could be a great match or a good fit for that student. When you're back in high school and you were choosing colleges, why did you choose William & Mary? William & Mary's heavy emphasis on strong undergraduate liberal arts curriculum and also its size. Um, not that big, sort of on the smaller scale, but not too small. Those factors really um, made William & Mary a compelling choice for me because as an interdisciplinary learner who didn't quite know what I was going to major in, um, I thought that open-ended liberal arts curriculum was a really good fit for me. Tell me your approach when you were writing these applications. What was your focus? So my focus was trying to like have a voice and tell a story that I can tell from my experiences. For the college applications, first you have to fill out the common applications, which goes to a lot of the schools that you're applying to. On top of that, you have to write your supplemental essays for William & Mary. I wrote something about my childhood memory that taught me like a lifelong lesson. So you can really go different ways with this. Let your voice tell the story. That would be like the most important tip that I can give you because application readers really want to make sure that on a human level that you, you would be a great fit for the school. And so that's really important for you to deliver it to your audience. And how would you recommend a student to find their voice? I would say, think about the moments when you felt like you accomplished something or think about moments when you were going through hardships or you were trying to make a difference in other person's life. Choose the story that you feel that best resembles you. I'm curious about the international student experience at William & Mary. Our international students are truly valued at William & Mary. We believe they can learn so much from William & Mary and that they'll find it a very supportive university. But we also think that the university as a whole has a lot to learn from international students. And I think that's an important message that we try to convey to all of our students and especially our international students, that they matter. Decades and decades ago, in a very, very old student handbook, there was a phrase that was used in that handbook that said, 
if you come here, you belong here. And we've really grabbed onto that as a central tenet to what's important to us at William and Mary. And that's what we want our students to feel and, and to share in and to be a part of. Are there any international students within the government program? We have a ton of international students within the government program. And how do they adapt to learning about the American politics and government systems? I'll be teaching something, making some you know point about uh, our system, but I haven't probed why. Why is our system structured that way? And you know, without fail, a student who didn't grow up in the United States will ask that question: Why? Why is it like that? Why do Americans think like that? Why do Americans prefer that? Um, and so I think that William & Mary is a great place to be if you haven't grown up in the United States because you'll be surrounded by peers who are curious about you and your background, um, what's different in terms of where you grew up, what's similar, um, and how we can kind of um, more richly and deeply understand those similarities and differences. Aaron, tell me more about your college experience thus far. How has it been a meaningful time for you? At William & Mary, the liberal arts curriculum really pushes you to think outside your comfort zone. I got to explore other areas that I did not know about, but also still be able to pursue my interests in the areas that I have been passionate about. So for example, I'm a sociology and economics major. However, I took a course in data science department because the course description was so interesting to me. And I was glad to find out that in a class of 15 students, I was not the only humanities major. I thought that I would be the odd one out, but turns out the other students are there to learn about other fields, just like me. So I thought that was a very great value that the college um, instilled in its students. This whole experience has played a very positive role in my educational career. And how do you think this liberal arts education will impact your life uh, and your career in the future? I think this liberal arts curriculum definitely opened my eyes to thinking in different perspectives. And I think that's a really important skill to have because later like that can really ease the ways that you work or it can even diversify your interests. You can find new passions. What do you think has been the impact that William & Mary has made on our nation. Without a doubt, um, over the last three centuries, William & Mary has built up an incredible record of leading the way in public policy, in government. William & Mary has produced some of the most important leaders uh, in this country's history in terms of government, but the tradition continues to this day. From George Washington to Thomas Jefferson to many of my contemporaries in Congress, William & Mary has played an important role in shaping our nation and its leaders. We have very notable alums, people who are making a huge impact. The, the decisions that they make impact millions of Americans. But more importantly, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of alums whose names will never be in the news, but who are doing really important things to improve the quality of life for people um, here in the U.S. And, and around the world as well. Hark the students' voices swelling, strong and true and true and clear. One of the greatest things that I value about this college is the people that I've met and the connections that I've made. It's a really great feeling to know that there's always a community that you can find on campus. Our students and our alums are incredibly proud um, to be part of William & Mary. That sense that you're a part of the community does not leave once you graduate. And so um, once a member of the tribe, always a member of the tribe, there's a huge sense here of wanting to pay it forward. When you're able to look back through our three centuries of history, uh, you see that William & Mary has a tradition of preparing leaders to go on and really help move this country and this world forward. And ultimately, I think what students remember most will be those fellow students they meet, the faculty, the staff, and the experiences they share together as part of the William & Mary family.